Have you ever wondered why some students are better at learning a language than others? Sharon Taberski in her book, Comprehension from the Ground Up, and I quote, children who come to school having engaged in rich and stimulating language experiences during their early years are better equipped to succeed in school. What about those children who have not had such experiences? Teachers, we need to bridge this gap, as Taberski suggested by providing language-rich experiences, vocabulary development, and time for accountable talk. With this in mind, and considering oral language and vocabulary as one of the key pillars of reading, today's session will be teaching phonics using words in invented spelling. However, before we begin, I would like to share with you some key terminologies to help you understand today's concept. Our first word is phonics. Phonics is basically the relationship between sounds of the letters in the alphabet, meaning what we hear, and symbols, how we write what we hear. For example, the word lady has four sounds. L, A, D, A, four sounds. However, the word duck, even though we are seeing four letters, it only has three sounds. D, A, K. This is phonics. Our next word is invented spelling. Invented spelling is allowing students to spell words the way they think they sound by making their best judgment. Learning to spell is a developmental process that every student goes through to reach to the correct spelling. For example, if I ask a child to spell the word duck and the child gives me D-U-C or D-U-K, this is phonetically correct and accepted. The child knows the sound pattern. The incorrect spelling should be seen in a developmental light. Children need to be empowered by our acceptance of, in, of their intervented spelling. The child could learn the correct spelling when the teacher begins to teach about consonant diagrams. For example, CK in the word duck. Our next word is zone of proximal development. The zone of proximal development theory was developed by Lev Vygotsky, a Russian philosopher. This theory is focused on how best children learn and when teaching is most effective. Have you ever had times when you thought you were teaching your hearts out only to realize your students were not understanding or grasping a concept? If so, this is as a result of not teaching within your students' zone of proximal development. According to Vygotsky, when you teach children within their zone of proximal development, there is a higher rate for successful learning. The question then is, how do you know when you are at your students' zone of proximal development? Pat Johnson, in her book, Catching Readers Before They Fall, accounts for a story she heard that could best answer this question. The story is about three children in a sandbox who were tasked to make a birthday cake with a packed down sand. Child one, he first fills the bucket with sand, periodically patting down the sand to make it firm. When it is full and packed down hard, he then turns the pail upside down and slowly glides it off, careful not to ruin the shape he has created. And what do you think? He produced a sand birthday cake. Child two, she shovels a few handfuls of sand into the bucket, looks up at the teacher, hesitates, then shovels in a few more. When the bucket is about half full, she turns it over and all the sun spills out. Child three, 
he gets in the sandbox, picks up the shovel, and starts eating the sand. So which child do you think was learning in his or her zone of proximal development? Was it child one who quickly produced his sand birthday cake? Was it child two who kept looking at the teacher for support? Or was it child three who started eating the sand? You guessed it right. Yes, it's child number two. She's ready to learn this task with your support. Hence, it is important for teachers to teach within their students' zone of proximal development. It is only then with modeling, support, and practice that students will learn the desired out concept. For child number one, his instructional time was being wasted as he already knew the concept. Sadly, child number three, who started eating the sun, was at his frustrational level, a common mistake of ours. Therefore, to arrive at the goal for teaching and learning, it is of paramount importance for teachers to understand the zone of proximal development as they get to know their students. A whole session solely on Vygotsky's zone of proximal development is coming soon. Now that we have had an understanding of how children learn, I'm going to share a multi-level activity that supports teaching students in their zone of proximal development. This is called making words. Making words through invented spelling helps to develop phonemic awareness among young students and struggling readers. The set of activities are very structured as students are guided through a pattern or sequence while engaged in invented spelling. In their article, Making Words, Enhancing the Invented Spelling Decoding Connection, Patricia and James Cunningham provided some key steps to follow when teaching making words. Step one. Place the large letter cards in a pocket chart or along the chalk ledge. Step 2. Have designated children give one letter to each child. Step 3. Hold up and name the letters on the large letter cards and have the children hold up their matching small letter cards. Step 4. Write the numeral 2 or three if there are no two letter words in this lesson on the board. Tell them to take two letters and make the first word. Use the words in a sentence after you say it. Step five. Have a child who has made the first word correctly make the same word with the large letter cards. Step six. Continue having them make words, erasing and changing the number on the board to indicate the number of letters needed. Use the words in simple sentences to make sure the children understand their meanings. Step 7. Before telling them the last word, ask, Has anyone figured out what word we can make with this, with all our letters? If so, congratulate them and have one of them make it with the big letters. If not, say something like, I love it when I can stump you. Use all your letters to make blank. Step 8. Once all the words have been made, take the index cards on which you have written the word and place them one at a time in the same order children made them along the chalk ledge or in the pocket chart. Have children say and spell the words as you do this. Use these words for sorting and pointing out patterns. Step 9. To get maximum transfer to reading and writing, have the children use the patterns they have sorted to spell a few new words that you say. These are the nine steps to making words taken from Cunningham and Cunningham 
in their article, Making Words, Enhancing Invented Spelling Decoding Connection from the Reading Teacher, pages 106 to 115. So we can see that teaching making words comes with much planning. The teacher must decide what the final word would be. This is dependent on the curriculum tie-in, students' interests, letter sound patterns, and reading level of students. I tried this activity with my 10 and 11 year old nephews using the word Easter being scrambled. First, they had to make as many two letter words, then three, and so on until they got to the final word Easter. They enjoyed it and asked for another. I also had them write a short paragraph on how they spent Easter using any of the five words they made. This activity will vary dependent on the level of students you have. For my visual viewers, here are two videos as samples of teachers using making words in literacy instruction. Let us take note of the steps the teachers use. The teacher explains that a making words activity helps children to understand how longer words are constructed based on common patterns such as vowel combinations. This process also provides opportunities for ongoing assessment. The activity begins with students building a two-letter word and culminates in the unscrambling of the seven-letter word, oatmeal. Students reflect on what they learn through making words lessons. Right now we're going to do a making words lesson in which the children are given a limited number of letters that in the end go together to make a long word. We're going to use that to help us understand how words go together and how they can help us make patterns that we can spell more difficult words with. So we're looking for patterns in words, double vowel patterns, and then transference of that to a larger word. While they're doing that, I'm going to be start pointing things out to them, help them stretch out words, help them to understand how those vowel shapes need to go together, and um, doing a lot of assessing, actually, because there's certain kids that I'm going to zero in on that I know as we build are going to have a harder time with this. How many vowels do you have in your collection of words? We have four vowels. Why are vowels important? Natalie? Because, um... Then the word won't make sense. Words have to have vowels in them. Or a word has vowels. to have a vowel. Every word has a vowel unless Even it's a short form. We ready? Okay, we're going to start out by making some little words and then we're going to build. Start with some easy ones. Are we ready? We're going to make some two letter words. The first letter you're going to make is the word at. Who can spell the word at? Easy peasy. John? A-T. We're going to put that there because we're going to build on that. Question. All right, you're going to add one letter to at, and you're going to make it say eat. Ooh, that was pretty easy. Leave that there and add one letter, Piero. Good, spell it for me, Piero. E-A-T. Good. All right, let's look at eat. Now what you're going to do is take those three letters, and you're going to change the position and make them say eight. Keep your three letters down. Change your order. It is a magic E, Elliot. Good job. Spell it for me. T. Excellent. What we're going to do now, are you listening? Sean? We're going to make the big word. We need to make, find a word that uses all of the letters. I'm going to give you a clue. Begins with a vowel. As soon as you get it covered up. Good, good call. I like this. <laughs> I got it. Excellent. I got it. I got it. Okay, everybody, stop. We are going to hear my friend Cole spell the long word. O a t m e a l. And what does it say, Cole? Oatmeal. Oatmeal. Good job. Why is this activity important, Julia? 
because you can learn more words from this activity. You can learn what? More words. It helps us learn words? Why else? It's like a funner version of word study because you're making words and it's like a game. You could learn to read it and to write it. Good, it helps us with reading our words and it helps us with writing our words. Good job, boys and girls. All right, let's look at the letters that we have at the top of our paper. We have some vowels and we have some consonants, okay? Place all of your letters at the top where you see the little house. And just so we don't get confused, remember to take your letters back home when we get ready to create a different word, okay? Let's see, I want you to pull down two letters that spell the word and. Two letters. Class, how do you spell Ann? A-N. Do you live in an old house? Take all of your letters back home for me. Now we are looking to spell a different word. How do we spell E, class? E-A-T. Keep your E-A-T. See if you can switch the letters that you already have on your line. Switch them around and create the word T. T. I do not like to drink iced tea. How do you spell the word T, class? T-E-A. T-E-A. What sound do you hear at the end of T? E. Great job. You hear the E sound. I want you to change the first letter on T. See if you can make the word C. Just the first letter. Dangerous whales live in the big blue sea. How do you spell that word? S-E-A. And what's the ending sound on that word? E. E. We're going to add one letter to make the word seat quickly. Let's see who gets it first. One letter to make the word seat. Great job. How do you spell seat? S-E-A-T. Who can use it in a sentence for me? Shelby. Will you sit in your seat? Will you sit in your seat? I have something tricky for you. Do you hear the E sound at the beginning, middle, or end of the word seat? Raise your hand. Where do you hear it, Kanaya? In the middle. You hear it in the middle. You hear it in the middle. Great job. Everybody say, eat. Yes. Great job. I want to see if you can find your mystery word. What do you think the secret word is going to be? Remember, when you're using the secret word, you have to use all of your letters. I want to give you a few minutes to see if you can find the secret word. If you can't, I'm going to give you a clue. Think elephants. Now think what do elephants like to eat? George has the mystery word, the secret word. Does anyone else have it? Great job, Kendasia. George, tell us what our word is. What is our secret word? Peanuts. Peanuts. Great job. Peanuts. Spell peanuts for me, George. P-E-A-N-U-T-S. Great job. Great job. We have seen that making words is much more than teaching conventional spelling. The set of activities guided students through a structured pattern while engaging in invented spelling. Students were able to use their phonetic skills to decode letter sounds to create words while the teachers provided the needed support as they progressed to higher level activities. Noticeably, Ongoing assessment occurred throughout these activities. Teachers, I challenge you to use making words in your language arts lessons to help students understand how words are formed based on common patterns. This for sure will help your students develop into better readers and writers. I thank you.